Hi there, welcome to the first lesson on solving trig equations uh, and the further trig topic. What we're going to look at today is being able to identify where solutions to trig equations exist and most importantly providing all the solutions to a given trig equation. Now what I mean by that is looking at an equation like this when you have sine x equals a half. We've seen that and used that before when we worked with soccer to and when we worked with the sine rule and the, uh, the cosine rule when we worked with cos. You would do inverse sine of a half and you get the answer 30 degrees. The problem here is we're actually not being as full as we possibly can. We know from the graphs now what happens above 30 degree, uh, above 90 degrees, sorry, we know what happens at 120, 150 and so on, right the way up to 360 and beyond. Now, if this line here is a half, we don't just have one solution where sine x is equal to half. We've got another one up here and we can look at later on in, in your mathematical careers what happens beyond 360 as well. But the important thing here is you don't just have the one solution, you've got two. So it's really important that you're able to find both. Now the beautiful thing about trig graphs is that all three of them are symmetrical in some way, shape or form. So if that solution is 30 degrees there, we can use the fact that the graphs are symmetrical to come back the same amount from 180. So the solutions to this form, uh, to this equation is x equals 30, but also x equals that 180, take away the 30 coming along here, so 150 degrees. Now, you can solve all of these from the graphs, but there is a quicker way of doing it. It's just the same routine getting into every single way, uh, every single time. So what we're going to look at is actually between 0 and 360, looking at a sine graph again. The only reason that was there is because the sine graph was still positive at this point. With a cosine graph that you've got here, it's not positive in there. Okay, it's positive later on, it's positive at the end here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all three graphs and create a little chart that will help us tell us when things are positive and where solutions are. So looking at the first 90 degrees, sine is positive, cos is positive, and tan is positive. So sine is positive, cos is positive, and tan is positive. Looking at the second lot of 90 degrees between 90 and 180, sine is still positive here, it's above the x-axis, but tan is negative and cos is negative. So sine is positive, cos is negative, and tan is negative. If you look at that third section, well, let's call it quadrant, seeing as we put it into four, sine is now negative, tan is actually positive now, and cos is negative. So sine is negative, cos is negative, and tan is positive. And lastly, sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, tan is negative in the fourth quadrant, and cos is positive. So sine negative, cos positive, tan negative. Now that is not the easiest thing to remember in terms of giving us clues. So let's just make it a little bit easier. Firstly, in that first quadrant, well, they're all positive. So let's just, what's going on? That's better. Okay, they're all positive. So let's put an A in. In that second quadrant, between 90 and 180, it was only sine. So let's put an S. In the third quadrant, it was only tan. And in the fourth quadrant, it's only cos. So that diagram, and we'll tend to call it a cast diagram, cast, okay, is, tells us whereabouts the trig equations are positive. Okay, now we're going to use that cast diagram extensively over the next three videos. Okay, and all of it comes from the graph. Now, going back to sine x equals a half, we have done this already. Okay, we are looking for whereabouts sine is positive. I am talking about sine, and I'm talking about a positive a half, so I'm looking for whereabouts sine is positive. So in my cast diagram, I know it's positive in that first quadrant, where they're all positive, and I know that's positive in the second quadrant, where only sine is positive. So what I'm going to do to find my angle, I'm going to do inverse sine of a half, which I know is 30 degrees. And then I'm going to put that 30 degrees into my two quadrants that 
our sign is positive. So although we've done that, that's me putting into the first one, and that's me putting into the second one. So my answers, all my answers between 0 and 360, which will be in your question, sorry, I've missed that out, is that x is equal to 30 degrees from the first quadrant, but in the second quadrant, it's coming back from 180, so it's 180 take away the angle, which is 150. Okay, now that's exactly how we're going to answer these questions. We're going to use the cast diagram to tell us what four quadrants we're working in, and then we're going to work with that cast diagram to tell us what the answers are. Now, again, just a little bit of work here. In the sign, if you look at that first angle, in the second quadrant, it's that angle, that same angle, because it's symmetrical, coming back from 180. In the third quadrant, it's that angle added on to 180, because we're still talking about the same angle, because it's symmetrical in a number of ways. And in the fourth quadrant, it's that same angle coming back from 360. In the tan graph, that angle at the start, it's going to be, sorry, come the wrong way, is exactly the same as that angle in the second, again coming back from 180. And the third quadrant, it's the same angle, but this time it's getting added on to 180, again the same as sine. And in the last quadrant, it's exactly the same angle, but it's coming back from 360. And the first one in cos, that angle there, is exactly the same as coming back from 180. That's exactly the same angle there. And then adding on to 180. And then coming back from 360 there at the end. All of those squares are going to be exactly the same. Okay, because the cost graph is symmetrical in a number of different ways. So in that first quadrant, the angle is just going to be the angle. In the second quadrant, you can see all three of them are working their way back from 180. So it's going to be 180, take away whatever angle we get from our inverse. And the third quadrant, okay, all three of them there are getting added on to 180. So in the third quadrant, it's 180 add on whatever angle we're working with. And in the last quadrant, they're all coming back from 360. There, there and there, it's all coming back from 360. So the last one is 360 take away. Now you need to know two things about the cast diagram. Firstly, you need to know the cast diagram itself so you can pick out whereabouts that things are positive. And later on, uh, the next video is going to show you whereabouts they're negative. But all it also tells us what we're doing. Okay, so in that first quadrant, it's coming on to zero. And the second quadrant is coming back from 180. The third quadrant is going on to 180. And the last quadrant is coming back from 360. Okay, now we're going to give you two examples. I'm going to give you two more examples how to use this. And then I'll leave some examples there. And I'd imagine you'll do a lot of work in class this because this is a really kind of tricky bit that's going to need a bit of work. So the first thing I'm looking at here is, right, this is cos, and I'm looking at positive a third. So I want the two places on my cast diagram where cos is positive. So it's positive here, and it's positive here because they're all positive in that first quadrant and only cos is positive in that fourth. The next thing I'll do is work with my inverse to get the angle. So the angle is inverse cos or third. Okay, you go to your calculator, you type in inverse cos of 1 over 3 and you'll get 70.5. Okay, so the angle we are working with is 70.5 degrees. Now, in that first quadrant, I know that the angle is just the angle. In the fourth quadrant, it's 360 take away the angle. So my two answers here are x equals, well, in the first quadrant, it's 70.5 degrees. In the second quadrant, it's 360 take away 70.5 degrees. So when I do that sum, it's going to be 289.5 degrees. And that's my full answer for solving that between 0 and 360. So use your cast diagram to tell you where the solutions are. 
then use your inverse to calculate what your angle you're working with is, and then your A is your 180 plus minus 360 minus A's to tell you what your actual answers are. Okay, last one here. So tan X is equal to 2.13. So firstly, I'm looking at tan, and I'm looking at positive 2.13. So I'm going to my cast diagram, and I'm writing out, or I'm taking everywhere where tan is positive. So they're all positive here, so tan must be positive and tan is positive there. So I'm working in the first and I'm working in the third quadrant. Next thing I do is look for my angle. That's going to be inverse tan of 2.13, okay, which is equal to 64.9 degrees. And then my answers, going back to my cast diagram, in that first quadrant, it's just A, in the third quadrant, we know from the graph it's 180 plus A. So my two answers are X equals A and 180 plus A. So my two answers are 64.9 degrees and 180. Add 64.9 degrees, so 244.9 degrees. Okay, now that's going to be the same process every time. Use your cast diagram. Tick where it's positive or negative, we're getting a negative in the next video. Then do your inverse to calculate the angle you're working with and then put that angle into the two quadrants where you have ticked and that'll give you all the answers. Okay, now there's three examples to try. Your teacher will probably go over these when you go in. Give them a try. If you're unsure of any, come in and ask us for help. Okay, thank you very much.